working in England, living and doing the same thing for 20, 30 years. Um, you know, you get into a rut. You know, you, everybody, you, you get married, you have children, you get divorced, uh, you live on your own, you do work, you work to live, and you just get into a rut. And, and you know, it's okay, it's not that you're in a massive depression, but life every day is the same. Now, you know, I came to Poland when I was 52 years old. Uh, so it was a completely new start at quite a late age in life. I make ends meet by teaching English, which means basically I have conversations with people. People want a native speaker, that's what I give them. I'm not qualified, I've had no training, I didn't come here as an English teacher. Sometimes it's a little embarrassing because, you know, there's trained, qualified Polish teachers of English who can't earn as much as me. In fact, earn a lot less than me. It's just the native speaker bit. I'm not here to make a fortune, I'm here to do something good. I teach anywhere. I teach in offices, businesses, cafes, in the park, in people's homes. I teach here. I teach on the phone. I really enjoy it, actually. Of all my careers, this is probably the most satisfying. You know, when you take somebody and their English is really poor and you get them to a, a level, a higher level, there's an immense satisfaction in that, yeah. All my life I've had two great passions. One is helping people, the other is football. So what a great opportunity to combine the two together and do something I really love. My name is Mark Harrison. I work for an English football charity called Lions Row. The goal of Lions Row is to harness the passion of football fans in a constructive way by taking them to a country where there's a football tournament on, the World Cup, and using that passion to do something constructive in the community. In 2011, we knew that we had the Euros coming to Poland, to Warsaw, and Lions Row asked me if I would come and live in Warsaw for a year to start setting up the program. I think I could have gone to any country. I could have gone to South Africa, I could have gone to Brazil. I came to Warsaw. I came for a year. I'm still here five years later. I came and I stayed because I could see that I could do something to make a difference. You know, if you'd asked me five years ago, you know, can you see yourself living in Warsaw, Poland, I probably would have said no. Do people here think you're crazy for staying here? Oh, definitely, yeah. <laughs> you know, you get the, you know, you get the Polish guy who says, but isn't it, isn't it supposed to be Polish people going to England to work? The beginning was stark, bleak, difficult. We went to stay in a hostel because I had nowhere to live. It was a hostel in the middle of nowhere, an old army barracks full of construction workers. And I remember, you know, a couple of days after I'd been here, I just sat on the bed and I was like, what the hell have I done? I've just walked away from a life. You know, I was comfortable, I had a business, I was maybe not making much money, but I was, everything was there. And I really thought, shit, what have I done? But then I started doing things. I started meeting people. I started visiting schools, making contacts. I found a church, met some new people. I found a good English bar where I could drink English beer. And, you know, things moved. Seven weeks after I arrived, I've moved into this place. I had a home.
Well, I think I decided within three months, I was telling my friends and my daughter, look, you need to know this, that I'm, I'm staying. I'm not coming back after 12 months. I quite seriously think I'll probably stay here, not only till I stop work, I'll probably retire here. My grand plan at the moment is hopefully next year to have enough money saved up to buy some land just outside of Warsaw uh, and build my own house, which has been a, a dream for a lot of years, but in England is impossible for me uh, financially, but here uh, is very possible. Uh, and so, in, you know, five years from now, I could have a house built, paid for, living in it, maybe 20 kilometers outside of Warsaw. I've worked in the building trade in the past. Um, I've worked on other people's houses. Now is the possibility to build something for me. Do you live here? I do. I mean, I park my bike uh, up outside all day. Uh, it's easier than taking it up and down the lift. Uh, I've never felt threatened. No, it's quiet. It's just peaceful. Telling my daughter, you know, she was, you know, quite shocked, uh, surprised. It was a difficult situation for her anyway because we were so far apart. When I came to Poland, my daughter left home and went to university in London. It was a new start for both of us. And it seemed like the time for me to move. I've always lived in houses and my parents always had big houses with big gardens. The biggest thing I miss uh, is having a garden. I love sitting out on here. Even when it's raining or there's a big storm going on or... It's a great place just to sit. It's very hot in the summer though. I like tattoos because, and mainly because they're artistic, but also I like them to mean something. And it's some Chinese lettering and it actually says my daughter's name. It has a sound like K and this bottom, bottom letter is a sound like T and she's called Katie. Your daughter's the most important person in your life? Oh yeah, definitely, yeah. You close? Uh, we're not as close as we should be. <laughs> it's kind of, you know, it's, you know, she was born at a time when my wife and I were separating, so she's never lived with me, and it's not always been an easy relationship. I mean, we've got a good relationship, but it's not what I would like it to be. Uh, and maybe not what she would like it to be either, so. You know, I've worked in industry, in business, I've had good jobs, I've had money. But really those things aren't important to me. When I came to Poland, you know, I live on a basic amount of money which I earn myself. And I earn that money to do what I believe in. I'm not bothered about money. I'm not bothered about success and being seen to be successful. I just want to change somebody's life. Why do you want to do that? Because I think it's important. Why is it so important? You know, a lot of people don't have the things that I had when I grew up as a boy. And I want to bring something of what I had to some people. And if I can do that through football, through Lions Raw, then I've achieved something worthwhile. You know, one of the highlights of my week is going into the school and teaching uh, the high school students and the gymnasium students for Lions Rock. It's, I love it. So generally I'm getting the feeling that Poland's better uh, when you think Poland's better. I, I can't say either way. Um, I liked the English system, some of it. I certainly liked making choices early, and I think the university system is good, except for that bit. Okay, nice to see you, I'll see you next time. Thank you. I live in a, a neighborhood of Bielani, it's a district in uh, Warsaw. I live here with my dog, Max, my cat, Genghis. There's not many foreign people living around here. Uh, people know me as the eccentric or slightly eccentric English guy who goes out on his bike in stupid weather. Bielani is made up of uh, lots of old communist blocks from the 60s and 70s. It's grey, it's not particularly attractive. 
but I live right next door to the Bielanski Forest. It's a nature reserve full of wild animals. And I take my dog there. I spend a lot of time there. And the beauty is I get around by cycling, which is one of my passions. The whole day is planned around how long it takes to cycle from here to here. I average about a thousand kilometers a month. I'm going to a lesson now, yeah. It's about 30 minutes to the town, do the lesson, come back. Yeah, I mean, I try and plan it so each lesson, you know, I can get a progression, do two or three lessons close together. But uh, today, the second lesson tonight is cancelled, so I'll come straight back. I try to be healthy, try to keep fit. I'm at an age where I need to think about things like that, you know. So I might, for instance, just do some uh, uh, bicep curls. So it would be something like, you know, this kind of exercise. You know, you can work the different parts of your shoulder by, you know, different what I call flies. You do this supported normally, but you do that, which is a different part of the shoulder. You can do it like tricep exercises, you know, this sort of thing. Health-wise, I'm usually really good. And, um, you know, visiting a doctor, uh, I can't remember the last time I visited a doctor. I think it's the, health is about the only reason at the moment I can think that would send me back to England permanently. I like to read. I read a lot, fantasy, historical fiction, anything really, good book. I also like uh, photography, passionate about doing landscape photography. I like to spend time setting up the photo, getting the right light, getting the right angle. I'm not a good people photographer. I find that I don't have enough time, people are moving, people get bored quickly, so taking a, a portrait is not my forte. I also collect knives and swords. I've got a few back in England and I've made a few purchases here. I have some knives or swords from uh, Lord of the Rings style. I have some uh, interesting Polish made knives. I guess my social thing is when I'm in Legends Bar, you know, I mix, mix um, with a group of people, not necessarily English or American, but Polish. Obviously, I, I meet new students. I. Uh, you know, I'm quite social. If people invite me to a party or something, that's fine. One of my favourite bits here, actually, this is a uh, part of history. Warsaw Uprising. And this is a scene that they've been painting over the last few weeks depicting that struggle, which we're celebrating now. You know, it started two days ago, back in 1944. Well, it's certainly a city that remembers. People think of the Second World War ended in 1945, but it didn't really for Poland because they were occupied, they were part of the Soviet Union, it was communism, and they see their freedom being won in 1989. And they do want to remember all of that. And it is a feature of their character. Sometimes I think Poland looks too much in the past. Uh, you certainly see that politically at the moment. <laughs> and now your fucking country voted to get out of the EU. So how did it affect you? I was shocked that we made that vote. Uh, and of course it does leave a little bit of doubt and confusion. You know, where does that leave me? you know, here in, in Poland, in an EU country. Um, is that going to change my status? Will I need to look at visa applications in a, you know, a year or two's time? Or extreme, uh, you know, find a woman and marry her just so I can stay? Uh, who knows? I don't know. In a sense, it's kind of made me want to stay here because I really don't want to go back to a post-Brexit England. Metro's finally arrived here, so the second line uh, opened up just over a year ago. Uh, you're seeing new development, property prices going up. Although you've got all the greyness, you've also got what I think is a great view. And you know, the first thing they say is, oh, wow, actually, that's, that's quite a view. And they kind of see the positive. And then they look down and you can see trees everywhere. There's towers there that weren't here four years ago. Warsaw is a building site and it's everywhere you go there's new blocks going up. 
I have no idea where all these people are coming from who are buying them, but uh, it's a growing city. My life has, has had some very difficult times in it, uh, without a doubt, and times when life has really hit me hard. So I was married for seven years. It was a long time ago. Uh, you know, I was divorced, ooh, beginning of the 90s, about 92, I think I was, um, we, we divorced. It's about just after my daughter was born, so I should be able to remember it. Um, very difficult time in my life, very difficult in that. I fought a battle for 25 years with insomnia, and I fought a battle of 25 years of, uh, with depression. And uh, I don't, it's not a bad thing or a good thing. It's not something I'm ashamed of, it's what life is. And it is a constant battle, it's a daily battle. From the age of about 10, I had one clear passion, uh, one clear goal in life. At 12, I wanted to be a naval architect. And that was I wanted to design and build ships. That was my goal. And at the age of 22, I qualified as a naval architect. I was full of excitement for a lifetime doing this, this job. Then things changed. I came out of un uh, university and there was no shipyards. They were all closing down. So there was no opportunity for new blood. My parents then moved to Southampton. We lived in the northeast, and they moved to Southampton. Southampton is like the heart of small boats, boat building. And in Southampton, there was opportunities. Um, but I'd also just met uh, my future wife at that time. And uh, we fell in love very quickly. But I was at a crossroads. And the crossroads was, I could have moved to Southampton with my parents, or I could stay where I was and continue a romantic relationship with the woman who's to become my wife. So I chose not to go. Then I got married, yeah. So I stayed in the northeast of England. At that point, I was struggling to find work. I'd done a little bit of, I did about 18 months with a small building company doing construction. And I ended up uh, eventually working in the printing business um, and doing some old style silk screen printing. Looking back, hindsight, always wonderful. It took me on a route that took me away from the thing that I'd always imagined that I would do. So it was a huge point in my life. And when you reflect on that, it set me on a path. That path has had lots of consequences. Ultimately, it led to divorce, painful time. It led to a period of extremely bad health, stress, breakdown. But it also had points, you know, my daughter was born in the middle of that mess. You know, she was literally conceived right in the middle of that mess. And she's the delight of my life. You know, I stayed in jobs in, in an area that weren't interesting. In fact, they were soul-destroying jobs at times. But I needed to be there. I needed to be there for my daughter. I was offered promotions that I had to turn down because it meant moving to a different part of the country. I made some sacrifices for the sake of my daughter's life and to be close to her and to be part of her life. She's got her own life now. And, and I'm now able to make free choices about what I do. And here I am in Poland, and I can do the things I want to do. And that turns out to be doing Lions Raw, teaching kids, love seeing children's lives influenced and changed, and actually teaching English, which I really enjoy. It's one of the most satisfying jobs I've ever had. Do you know, I'm not going to say that my life is perfect in Warsaw, it's not. There are aspects to my life that I would change. I guess my Achilles heel is, uh, is more a, uh, on the emotional front, you know, um, you know, relationships, not being in a relationship at the moment, I guess. Oh, there's, you know, there are definitely times when you're sitting on your own in your apartment that you, 
you could do with a little bit of company. I am a single man, but would prefer not to be. Life should be, for me, you know, meet somebody, marry, have children, live together until you're old. You know, in a few, few days' time, I'm going to England and we're going to celebrate my parents' 60th wedding anniversary. And, well, I'm, I'm never going to celebrate a 60th wedding anniversary unless I'm a miracle and live to a really, really old age. Polish women, definitely. I mean, you probably know yourself, they are very beautiful. Uh, sadly, I always seem to fall in love with the wrong one. <laughs> it's probably the, the answer to that story. <laughs> I'm always active and I've got lots of plans for the future, which could be a future on my own. Um, but uh, it's certainly not what I want. Life is what it is and life is, sometimes it's what you make of it, but sometimes it's what life does to you. It kicks you and pushes you in directions that don't always work out. Mostly I'm, I'm happy with what I'm doing, happy with my work, very happy with changing people's lives and the rest I can just keep working towards. You're a spiritual man? Yeah, definitely, definitely. I had a choice to go to an international church, which is all in English, or I could go to just a normal Polish church and hopefully get a translation. Um, I chose instinctively to go to the Polish. I wanted to meet Polish people. So we're outside uh, the church that I uh, attend. Uh, it's a big Protestant church in uh, Poland. I've been coming here for four and a half years. Uh, it's very lively, very with it, if that's the way to say it. <laughs> it's in Polish, but there's translation into both uh, English and Russian, I think. There's somebody in a booth at the back over here, and they translate, and we have an earpiece so we can hear. You know, the worship sessions are great because uh, music is kind of, it's an international thing. And actually, although I don't speak Polish, I can sing quite well in Polish. I have no idea what I'm singing about, but I do make an effort to sing. And my friends who are listening say I sing it quite well. You know, people in England, uh, they ask me what I'm doing in Poland, what I'm doing in Warsaw, you know, why aren't I getting ready for retirement? Well, I don't even want to think about retirement. I want to do something good now. You know, I think I would like, uh, I would like people to remember me perhaps for some of the things that I did. You know, you know, if somebody spoke about me and said, you know, when life was really difficult, Mark came and, and he did this, then I guess that would be, uh, I'd achieve something good. Practical, yeah. I don't want to stop. I think when you stop, that's when you get old. I don't want to be old. I might be 85, but in here I will be still a young man. My grandfather, at the age of 87, and I remember this really clearly, I went to visit him and he said to me, Mark, what do you know about quantum physics? And I said, Grandad, I have absolutely no idea. I said, I've never studied it. I know it's like atomic. Uh, and I said, why? And he said, well, I've started studying it. I said, you're 87 years old and you're studying quantum physics. Yeah. Why are you doing that? Because I want to keep my brain active. I still want to learn. And you know, he died when he was 99 years old and he was still learning. Fantastic. I want to be like that.